Hi and welcome to Recall q and I'm Steve Hather, Director of the Recall Institute and in this week's Recall q and we continue with our review of an effective product recall procedure. In the last video I mentioned the importance of monitoring and identifying incidents and making sure that you have an initial response that your people can use and a clear internal escalation process, preferably to a key person or other persons within your organization that I like to refer to as incident coordinators or incident officers. In this video, I want to cover the investigation and initial assessment process and the critical role of the incident coordinator. So on our 10 key elements, we're here at number three. The incident coordinator is a central point for reporting, investigating, and the initial assessment of an incident. It's also important you have an alternate. Remember, Murphy's Law of Crisis Management says that if you only have one trained person, it's almost guaranteed that they will not be available when the incident happens. If we were to use a hospital analogy, the initial assessment is kind of like a triage process, identifying priorities, and what needs to get escalated, ensuring the right people are aware and the right resources are available. In a food or consumer goods company, the incident coordinator is often the quality manager, but certainly that doesn't have to be. In fact, the quality manager may quickly find themselves tied up in the investigation, so it may be a good idea to have someone else as either the coordinator or at least have someone else as the alternate unless the quality manager can delegate the investigation. Before we leave investigation, quality managers, please create an investigation checklist. I know this all sounds intuitive, but in the pressure cooker of a potential crisis, it's easy to miss something that becomes critical. So make sure you identify the key steps and resources like experts in appropriate areas and testing facilities to support you, for example. If you'd like a copy of a template, let me know in the comments section and I'd be very happy to send you an example of an investigation checklist. One of the most important roles of the incident coordinator in these early stages is to decide whether the incident needs to be escalated and who it needs to be escalated to. This is where a set of pre-agreed triggers to help decide what's serious becomes really useful. Also, internal contact lists and lists of external consultants that can support you would also be very helpful. As the incident unfolds, the incident coordinator becomes the facilitator of the process. They make sure the team follows the process, remains focused on the key issues, their actions are coordinated and the right communications are made at the right time to the right people. I've created a, another video on the skills needed and how to select the incident coordinator, so please check that out if you'd like further information. It's important, however, to note that you shouldn't necessarily select your incident coordinator based on their functional role. I mentioned the quality manager before and the quality function often drops into this role, but the key responsibility of this person has more to do with facilitation and communication skills than just functional skills. If you're interested in training for incident coordinators, we do have online training courses available that take you through both the process and the professional skills. So check out our website at www.recallinstitute.com. In the next video, I'll talk about the next key element, number four, on forming the incident management team. If you can't wait for the next video and want to jump ahead and see the whole process for an effective incident management and product recall procedure, you can download our free guide to the 10 key elements of crisis prevention by clicking on the link below or typing 10 key elements in the comments section and I'll be happy to forward that to you. Don't forget that if you have any questions you'd like answered in our recall Q&A series, please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified when new videos are posted. So thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon.